Hi, I'm Lisa Amundsen from Around the Bobbin, and today I'd like to share with you a walkthrough of the Hot Stuff Oven Mitt pattern. If you're not familiar with this pattern, it is a sewing pattern to make a silicone oven mitt, and the pattern includes the instructions, the templates, and one silicone overlay. If you'd like to make another one, then you can get the refill. Uh, and this is a sample of the Hot Stuff Oven Mitt. It's got a silicone overlay on the outside, a cuff, and a lining that's quilted on the inside. So it makes some great protection for your hand in the oven, and you can um, use it up to 450 degrees. It's heat resistant, it works very well. It has a good grip on it, and you can wash it off if it gets dirty. There are three steps to this pattern. In the first step, you're going to make the exterior which is a combination of the silicone, the decorative insert, which is the part that you see through the silicone, and the cuff. In the second step, you're going to make the lining, which is a quilted insert that goes inside the oven mitt. And then in the final step, you will finish the oven mitt by adding binding along the bottom. So let's take a look at the exterior. So the exterior is made up of the silicone, the decorative insert, and the exterior lower band. So you're going to sew together the decorative insert, which is just two layers sewn together. You stitch around the outside, clip down to the dot, but not through the stitching, and you're going to press the seams open and turn it right side out and press along the edge. So I've done that. And then we're going to insert this inside the silicone. And this is the part that's going to show through the silicone. You want to make sure that you push all the way up to the edge and get it to lay nice and all the way up. A little bit will hang below the silicone and that's what you want so that it is less likely to stick to your sewing machine. And then we're going to slip this band around the bottom. You'll see that one edge is curved and one edge is flat and we want the flat edge to be along the bottom edge. So I'm going to slip that over the top. I'm going to align the seams together on the sides and clip it with fabric clips. There is actually a seam on the silicone, which you can't see on the video, but you can see it when you are looking at the silicone. So you want to use that as your side seam. I'm just going to clip these sides and then add a clip on each of the other two sides. All right, and then we're gonna baste these together uh, first and then stitch it together and then top stitch it. So first the basting, we'll go over to the sewing machine and if you have a free arm, you can just slip this over your free arm. If you don't, you wanna just pull this back and you're gonna stitch on the inside. If you don't have a free arm, you're going to sew this uh, with the inside facing up. And our goal here is just to get it basted this first time around. And then we can get rid of these clips. And what we're going to do next is to mark this so we can do the real stitching. So being that's just basted on, you'll see that it's um, below this bump. And we want to stitch right below this bump. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a fabric marker. And you can feel that bump through the layers. And we're just going to mark right along there. That's because when you're stitching it in a tight and closed space, it's just a little hard to tell exactly where you want to be stitching. Oops, I had a bump there too. 
So I'm just going to mark right next to that bump. And you can just feel your way, but this is easier. Okay. So we're going to stick this back in here and we're going to stitch on the outside. And so the, the challenge here is to keep this bottom layer out of the way. So being that it's all clip, all the clips are out of the way though, this is, this is not hard. So we're just going to do a, I have to take off my basting stitch and I'm just going to use a slightly longer stitch. I've got it on 3.0. I'm just going to stitch a little bit and then readjust until I make my way around the outside. Back to the beginning, I'm going to back stitch. And now our three layers are sewn together in the spot that we need it. So I can take this cuff and fold it down. And you'll see that that is stitched right exactly where I want it, right below that bump. And then the next step is just to top stitch along the outside. And we're gonna do this the same way. Okay, and I'm gonna put my needle in the left-hand position. Since I have that feature on this machine, I'm gonna take advantage of it. And I'm gonna to top stitch using a 3.0 millimeter length. So, I'm gonna fuss with this a little bit to get it Kind of sitting the way I want here. All right, Got a stray thread there. Okay. It helps on this step to make sure your needle stops in the down position every time. So if you don't have an automatic feature for that, you may want to make sure that you get it down manually. Just about back to the beginning here. So when you you stitch a little bit, reposition it, stitch a little bit more, and then you just want to make sure you've got a nice straight line here, so that when you start stitching again, um, you don't get any z movement of the, of where your needle is. threads here. Okay, so now we have our exterior completed and, uh, and top stitched. 
and we can go ahead and do the lining. The next section of the pattern is to do the lining insert. And for this, you want to take your um, three layers, your interior fabric, your batting, and the white layer, and layer them up and quilt them. And then afterwards, you trace the template onto the quilt sandwich and then flip it over and trace it again. And then cut it out with scissors. And then you're gonna place them right sides together and stitch around the outside. So just stitch around the outside and back stitch at the beginning and end. And this is your lining insert. And that's all you do for the lining. In the final step of this pattern, uh, we're going to finish the oven mitt. And we've got our exterior, we have our lining, and we have the binding that I've already assembled. So this is just stitched together in a, and then folded in half. So I'm going to take the lining insert and put it inside the exterior. And you want to make sure that you get this all the way up into the tips of that oven mitt. So go ahead and push away, get that all the way up there. And then you want to baste the bottom edge. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this. I'll line up the seams, clip it with fabric clips, and baste the bottom edge together. And I tried skipping this to see if it was really necessary, but um, it really is necessary. It just, because the space is tight, uh, it just makes it so much easier to assemble this thing if it's been basted along the bottom, so. Don't skip it. Do yourself a favor, don't skip it. So there, I'm just gonna go ahead and baste that bottom edge and then um, add the uh, binding along the bottom edge as well. And the final step of the pattern is to hand stitch on the binding, which I have sewn on with the machine and I'm gonna pull it down and I'm gonna press that real quick and then fold it to the inside and clip it. Just enough to hold it in place a little bit. And then since that's a little awkward and tight to hand stitch it in there. I just fold the whole thing back like so, and then I can hand stitch it in place. And that's it.